Hey everybody, CJ here, your local friendly technology addict, and this is the Tech Addicts Attic. Today I wanted to break with tradition, and instead of doing a video about fountain pens, I'm going to do a video about radio. And what better way to get into radio than to do a crystal radio? You know, that's basically how it, how it was done way back in the day. Now, I'll leave it to you to go do your history research on how crystal radios came about and why they were called crystal radios, why they were popular, who they were popular with. That's your homework for this week. Now, I did find a website. I found several websites um, over the past several months. And they all basically have the same generic schematic. You have a detector diode that you put in line in series with a tuning coil and a tuning capacitor that are in parallel with each other. The bottom end of that goes to ground, the top end of that goes to an antenna, and somewhere in the middle you connect your diode. The output of the diode goes to the input of a speaker, an earbud, but it's got to be a crystal earbud. It's got to be you know, a specific piece of hardware that I don't have. So I cheat a little bit and I use an audio amplifier, okay, because I understand how audio amplifiers work. I've built them before. Basic ones, not so basic ones, but I, I get the idea. I get the, I understand how they, how they work. So I don't feel it's that much of a cheat to use one for this project because this project isn't about learning how to make an audio amplifier. It's not about learning how to amplify anything audio or even RF. It's about pulling that RF out of the thin air and converting it to audio. What happens after it's converted to audio, we'll let the amplifier handle that. But before you get to the amplifier, you have the RF circuit. Now, there is a website that I did go to tonight just to make sure that I had my circuit correct. Um, because it's been a while since I've built a crystal radio www.techlib.com slash electronics slash crystal.html you can read right and this schematic here shows a couple of parts that I've never actually used that being the capacitor and the resistor that come after the diode and really they're all just part of the AF circuit okay once you get past this diode here um, All of that, well, I guess I could have done without the strap. <laughs> but basically, all of that is all we're worried about. And everything from there on over, we're not worried about. Because all of this we're going to take care of using a pair of computer speakers. With an audio amplifier, when you can see here, I've got it up to about two-thirds, 67%. Um, for an antenna, I have a random length wire running through my attic that I have connected to an F connector at the base of my dining room wall. And from that F connector, I've got this piece of TV coax um, strap of copper to hold the braid back to keep it out of the way and to give me a method of easily connecting to ground. And the ground wire I've got going to an alligator clip, which I have connected to a power line ground. You're supposed to use a water pipe ground mainly because of that buzz that you hear in the background. A water pipe ground shouldn't have that buzz. But an electrical line ground does because you've, of course, got electricity and you're going to have um, inducted AF. And there's nothing I can do about that right now. At least, well, there is, granted, if I wanted to get it fancy, but I want to keep this simple. So you saw the schematic. Um, basically, it's a coil and a tuning capacitor in parallel with each other and then on one leg you have a detector diode and on the other leg of the um, coil and capacitor pairing you have ground which you can't see it but it's this red and black wire here running away. Okay. All of this stuff, just ignore it because 
I had them there for another project and I didn't feel like putting them away because I don't actually have a place. I bought a whole bunch of these things and I don't have a place to sort them and keep them separated. So I just left them here. It's easier than fitting them back in those tiny little Ziplocs. All right, so we have here a wire that I've got bent into a shape so that I can easily run that wire along the length of this uh, coil. And I'm going to take the antenna, I'm going to touch it right about here. And the length of wire over here. And it's it's very trial and error-y. Now, I don't know if you could hear that. <clears throat> I want to turn the volume all the way up to max. Because that's no doubt one of our local stations, AM Broadcast, and it's a strong station where I'm at. So it should have come in booming loud. So that's a sports show. Let me get another radio that actually has a digital tuner and see if I can't figure out. So that's a sports talk station. Of course, um, hmm. The only radio I've got doesn't have a power pack in it right now, and uh, it's a Dynamo, or Dynamo, but the alkaline batteries that I've got in it are apparently dead. So, let me pause this and I'll get this thing in working order. Alright, so I thought it was AM690, apparently not. Maybe it's not AM600 either. Hmm, interesting. Turn that one down. See if I can pick it back up. Like I said, very trial and error, this thing. I'm here. Well, you get the picture. It's uh, <laughs> very, 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 very rudimentary. It's very basic. And I've actually had success with this basic design before. Um, so I'm going to play with it a little bit. And then I'll do a little bit more of a video again. Because as you know, I'm limited to 10 minutes with this, this dual camera thing. So keep in touch. Keep in tune. We'll get this thing working a little bit better, and I'll set up a second video. Till then.